Rock, paper, scissors. Rock is for gay people. Paper is for bisexual because paper lays everywhere. <laughs> Hello guys, gals, and my non-binary pals. My name is Kati, and welcome to my adventure. So excited to make this joke. So, welcome to my very first segment of a fun little series I'm gonna do on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's coming. Welcome to the very first episode of Queer and Day, where we talk about all of the LGBT. It's so good. <laughs> so I've had this idea for a while where I pretty much just sit down with people who are also in the LGBT community and we talk about controversial things, we talk about insulting things, we talk about just really deep, real, and raw things. This is my very good friend Lincoln. You're non-binary, which means I'm that you're not male, confused as shit. Thing. And I'm bisexual, which means I like both you're genders. <clears throat> what is non-binary mean to you? But for me personally, um, it just means that I don't identify as male or female somewhere okay. in the middle-ish meaning. So in other words, you're confused. <clears throat> so you said that being non-binary makes you a part of the trans community. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Trans is an umbrella term and non-binary is also an umbrella term within the trans umbrella. If you were to put it on like a line, Mm -hmm. You have like trans men, trans women, and then non-binary is just everything in between. As somebody who identifies as non-binary, do you feel that you receive a lot of backlash? Oh, absolutely. So I was assigned female at birth, right? And mm -hmm. I'm on testosterone, so I present male. And before we get um, any further in the video, what are your preferred pronouns? Oh, they them. Okay. For us. You're welcome. I'm transitioning more like male, to present male. Okay, um, that's your goal. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think being perceived as male, even though I'm not. Would be more preferred. Yeah, um, but I think it hinders like the dating experience sometimes because like, I'm also bi. So not only are you confused, but you're also uh -huh. seeking attention. Yeah. Okay, yes. I never thought that I would meet someone more controversial than a bisexual person. <laughs> but a lot of times, like when I'm talking to men, there are like certain straight men that are like find themselves attracted to me and then mm -hmm. want to try and convince me that I'm female because they're insecure about being attracted to someone that's masculine. Yeah, I'm not trying to, you know, put every single person yeah. into one category. Obviously, there are some amazing straight men. Not many. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The people who will invalidate me the most are usually straight men. Yeah. And it's weird because I also feel like the people who sexualize me the most are straight men. So Lincoln actually just recently got, is that okay that I talk about? Yeah, oh yeah. Lincoln just recently got, what's, what are the technical terms for it? I just top surgery. The process going through that, what was, um, what made you decide that you wanted to do that? As soon as my chest like started to grow, I was like super uncomfortable with it. I knew what like trans people were, but I didn't know the term non-binary. I didn't know that there were things outside of male and female. I always wanted a flat chest but I didn't think I was trans enough to have top surgery. I always wanted it, even before I knew that it was a thing, much less a thing that I could have. So like, I started binding. Did you know what binding was when you started, or was it kind of just a natural thing where you were like, I don't want them to show? It was more so the second thing. So I booked my top surgery last April. Mm -hmm. I told my family in March. I'm gonna pause this because I just realized that the camera is tilted, so. If anyone gives you shit, it's not going to be for something you say. It's going to be for how you look. I want to say that the trans community is, is split pretty like half and half when it comes to um, the criteria for being trans. A lot of people think you don't need dysphoria to be trans, and a lot of people think that you do need dysphoria to be trans. I think you do need dysphoria to be trans. And I think the people that say that they're trans, that don't experience dysphoria, that kind of invalidates all of our experiences. And those people give the rest of the community a bad name, yeah. right? And, it, and a lot of people that are on that side of not thinking you need dysphoria to be trans will say that we're trying to pander to, like, cis people, right? Mm -hmm. It's not trying to appease cis people and prove, like, our validity. It's that the majority of the world is cis. The people that make the laws that protect my rights and allow me to have access to, like, hormones and surgery and all that. They're cis. Yeah. So, like, to an extent, yeah, I want to please them because, because, unfortunately, my fate lies in their hands. Ever since you got top surgery and started taking testosterone, have you... Testosterone. Did I say testosterone? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna leave it in. But <laughs> do you feel like your dysphoria has gone down a bit, and are you more confident in your body and kind of the way you can present yourself? Um, yes and no. Obviously, my chest dysphoria is completely gone. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. my results are like a one. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very happy with my chest. I'm happy with At my. At the end of the video, will you show us your chest? Oh yeah. Sorry, I kind of had to pause it for a second. Um, I apologize if the framing or angle is a bit different. I turned the light off behind us. We just had to go through some changes with the video. Not as many changes as you've gone through in the past year. But anyways, let's continue with that. So before I had top surgery, when I would look down, all I saw was my Your chest. Stomach. My hips. Like, do you want to talk about like and Yeah, yeah. Would you? Yeah, ever do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wasn't asking like, would you talk about it? I knew that you were gonna talk about it. I no, meant, no, I, get the no. And I meant I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> the technology isn't there. Like, there are. It's a, it's a brisk. Yeah, I mean, and like there, there are two different kinds of like bottom surgery, yeah. right? So there's phalloplasty, metoidoplasty. Let, let's explain that a little okay. bit because I know that there are gonna be some people watching this that are kind of like, what are you talking about? Are you okay with if I put yeah. that in the video? Yeah. They're like. I don't have any shame. <laughs> I don't care. Know her. Dignity? <laughs> don't know her? Don't know her. <laughs> I have no idea. Basically, when you have bottom growth, there's still like the ligament underneath that's attached. When you have get metoidoplasty, um, they do what's called like a, a simple release where they basically cut the ligament. So it's free to act like a cystic, like it gets hard. And okay. then you can also have like urethral lengthening, so you could pee out of it, you can get like testicular implants. Like, it depends on, there like are options, and that's like the less invasive option, right? The chances of complications are much lower. Phalloplasty is where they take, they basically create a phallus, right? Yeah, from your arm, right? Well, they, they take a donor graft. Um, the most common is your forearm. Yeah. That is done in multiple stages. It's a gamble too, it's because the the chances of you having complications are very very high medically, but also just with the way it looks. I yeah. dated a trans man, born female to male, and so that was one thing that we talked mm -hmm. about a lot is whether he wanted to get it or not. And I mean, it's I, I don't care, you know, it's indifferent to yeah. me. I'll fuck anything. <laughs> Because of the risk of complications, it's not anywhere in my foreseeable future. Would I even want bottom surgery? I don't know. Why would you possibly want it? It would more so be out of convenience when it comes to sex. Okay. I'm like your typical person. Like, I wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I put on my dick, and I go... <laughs> you went through top surgery, and I'm more proud of <laughs> that joke I'll than take that. It. I don't remember where I was going to go. I asked you guys to give me some things to talk about and maybe ask questions. I got some interesting things. Someone asked me if I love cream pies. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody asked, how did you know that you were bisexual? <laughs> Just unpack that emotional baggage. <laughs> Until I passed. So I knew like when I was very young, I was attracted to everyone. Like, And I never really questioned it. And it was never really an issue. Like I grew up in a household where my parents are very accepting and that supportive. That must be nice. <laughs> I just love who I love. For the longest time, I just didn't really own a label. I remember I was crying in the shower about it, and my roommate walked in, and she was like, why are you crying? And I was like, I had sex with a girl yesterday, and she was like, was it that bad? Like, <laughs> and I was like, no, it was great. And she was like, well, what's the problem? I was like, well, I just like, I, I just don't know what I am. And she's like, dude, you're Kati. When have you ever cared about fitting in or like being some type of label? Now I use the term bisexual just kind of as a way to not to put myself in a category for me, but to put myself in a category with other people. It's like, dude, why can't I just be my, me? So I use like queer for everything. So yeah. for like my gender, or yeah, my gender identity and my sexuality, mm -hmm. I use queer because it's like all encompassing. Yeah. It's super broad. Make mm -hmm. your own interpretations. Like, I don't care. When people ask me to be more specific, I tend to use pansexual more than bisexual. Whether you choose to label yourself or, or not, it could change tomorrow or it could change in 10 years or it's not necessarily like this stagnant thing right yeah. like it's, it's it's fluid at least that's how i see it i mean so that's how labels... anything is in life you know you're constantly changing exactly. it and things can experiences... change experiences any exactly any it's more so for other people than it is for me that's why i say queer i know a lot of people who are very dependent on labels i'm not like that mm -hmm. so you know if people ask me what my sexuality is i just see bisexual um because I want attention, you know? That's the best way to get it. Of course, of course. That and being non-binary. So I ask people to be raw and real. I think I said something along the lines of, if you're afraid that it might offend somebody, ask it. If you're trying to offend somebody, ask it. You can tell that this person's trying to be... Offensive? Yeah. Okay. So, Hit me. thank you. <laughs> so he said, ginger dysmorphia is a mental illness and should be treated as such. 
prove me wrong. Gender dysmorphia is not a thing. Like that term doesn't. Yeah. No, I kind of want to be like, did you mean gender dysphoria? Or I think he means gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the incongruence between biological sex, what you were assigned at birth, and your perceived gender identity, what you identify as. So technically speaking, gender dysphoria, it's not a mental illness, it's categorized as a medical condition in the DSM-5. But I think what he was trying to get at is that it's like all in your head, it's made up, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I think it's necessary for gender dysphoria to be categorized as a medical condition because then that allows me the right to seek treatment. Your treatments are um, social transition, hormone replacement therapy, and surgery. I think it's necessary for it to be diagnosed as a medical condition. That kind of just proves my fo point that you need dysphoria to be trans, because yeah. according to the DSM, it, it's like our proof that we exist. Yeah. Not that I have to like validate myself to anyone, not that I have to defend myself. Yeah, but it's, it's still nice to have. Exactly. Yeah. Like for me to have top surgery, I had to go to a gender therapist like, um, and get a letter saying that I have dysphoria in order for me to have top surgery. And it took a little bit more time and it can be a pain in the ass for a lot of people. But at the same time, it protects our resources. The thing with hormone replacement is that once you start it, getting off of it um, can cause a lot of issues. Yeah, it, it changes your body. Like my voice will never go back. The facial hair that I have, most of it is thick enough and coarse enough that I'll have it forever. A lot of changes are permanent, right? As much as it sucks to have to wait, I think it should be necessary yeah, for you to go. Yeah, most definitely. And does what? that... Does that look okay? Can you just should... make up your mind? Oh, I'm bisexual, I can't do that. Since we're talking about mental illness, that kind of brings me to the next topic I want to talk about. Um, mental illness in the LGBT community. I've noticed a lot of people in the LGBT community have mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me. Everyone will blame being gay, being lesbian, being bisexual, whatever, on mental illnesses. You know, the mental illness doesn't cause you to be gay. For example, when I was dating my ex and I was getting a lot of negative comments and just not very much support from my loved ones, I went through a really, mm -hmm. really deep depression because it's, I mean, it's isolating. Like, it's okay if you don't understand someone's sexuality or their gender right. or whatever. I'm not asking you to support me or agree with me, I'm just asking you to be there for me. So, um, amongst general cis Americans, mm -hmm. um, the attempted suicide rate is 1.6%. Trans people is over 40%. Wow. The reasoning for that, nine times out of ten, is like lack of support. But the thought of coming out, there's already that anxiety and mm -hmm fear of people not accepting you. Yeah, and your when whole that, world changing. And when that anxiety and fear becomes reality, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I, I'm, I'm very grateful to have had like a great support system of family and friends around me, but I know yeah. a lot of people who are not. When I was 15 and didn't know that I was trans, that scared little girl, is that's the same person that I am yeah, now. I would still give up anything for anyone that I love. Yeah. Like that, that didn't change because I changed my pronouns. It's like a terrifying thought. And I know it would never happen to me, because I have great parents, but like, just the thought that someone that's supposed to be in your corner, like that is their job, just like instantly turns their back on you because they had this vision of what your life was supposed to be. The future that you saw for your child, it's still there. It's still there. Some people eat ass, others don't agree with that. Does that mean that we should treat the people who eat ass <laughs> any differently? Stop, I'm trying to make the point. Long story short, be, be an asshole. <laughs> just practice love. You don't even have to practice support or acceptance, just practice love. Alright, well, I feel like this is a really good note to kind of end the video on. Um, I'm sorry if it was so long. This is actually a TED talk, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. I, I really hope that this video was informative and um, not too controversial or offensive. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody is offended, uh, tough fuck chick would be a little bitch. <laughs> if there is anything you think I could do differently with the series, please let me know in the comments below. I'm super interested to hear your opinions and your thoughts. So we said anything that offended anybody, again, let me know in the comments. I'm really depending on you guys to let me know what you think of the series. Hopefully you like it because I really, really enjoyed making it. If anyone who's watching might be struggling with one or a couple or all of the things, God forbid. I really hope you're not struggling with <laughs> everything sorry. we talked about. If you just need somebody to talk to, I'm always available. You can find me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever it might be. If someone who's watching is struggling with their gender identity or even just wants to be 
more informed, Lincoln is available. I will put their um, social media links in my description as well. So I also want to say a big thank you to Lincoln for being a part of this. Um, it really means a lot to me to have you by my side and supporting this idea. Thank you for having me. I know I'm not like super my comfortable first choice. on camera. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and until my next video in this series, keep on sipping that LGBT. <laughs> I don't know.